Excuse me, Mr. Reyes? You finished scraping the gum off that lounger or what? Uh, everything right now feels so out of reach. You always land on your feet, bro. You're hymen. They don't get out much. <laughs> I just want to rap. Jenny? Guard the hybrid's new life, but do not open it. You went in to get a shop, and all you brought back was a hamburger? Okay, I don't think it's a burger. You haven't looked? What the hell is that? How did you get it to do that? I think he likes me. It's on your back! Get it off! Get it off! Hurry, man. Who said that? It's okay, it's gonna be okay! Oh, oh, oh space. Free entry systems ready. Wait, 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 no, no! This ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. Oh. What is going on? I just wanna run. It's called the Scarab. It's some kind of world-destroying weapon. It's designed to protect its host. Sometimes it does what you want, and sometimes it doesn't. I, I think I cut a bus in half? The Scarab chose you, but it belongs to me. The low you feel for your family makes you weak. I just want to run. The universe has sent you a gift, and you have to figure out what you're gonna do with it. Whatever you can imagine, I can create. Let's party. Nice choice. I just wanna It's like Batman stuff. Batman's a fascist. Welcome back, everyone. Is Charlie DC just dropped a brand new Blue Beetle trailer with a whole bunch of Easter eggs? Obviously, there's a lot of big questions because of the big DC reboot, James Gunn rebooting everything into the DCU. Blue Beetle is supposed to be part of his new universe, the way he explained it in his video. A couple of big name drops and jokes about Batman, too, like George Lopez, his father, calling Batman a fascist during this. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Just starting at the beginning of the trailer footage, working way through shot by shot, talking about Easter eggs, WTF moments. So obviously the big thing is, is Jaime Reyes is the third version of the Blue Beetle. The original is Dan Garrett. The second is Ted Kord. And then the third is Jaime Reyes. It seems like they're changing a couple things about his backstory. Like in the comics, he's from El Paso, Texas, which is where he finds the scarab. They're changing how he finds the scarab and changing a little bit about how he interacts with the Ted Kord character. They explain in the DCU he lives in Palmyra City, which I think is meant to be a sly wink at Ray Palmer. I don't know if he's going to be in this movie anywhere. At the beginning of the trailer, you just see his sister joking with him about how he's just pretending and not working. Like Earth to Jaime, are you still doing your job? We see Cord Industries. The main villain of the movie is going to be Victoria Cord, Ted Cord's sister, who is a character that they just canonized in the comics. The whole idea is that his love interest, who's going to be Jenny during the movie, steals the Scarab Beetle from Cord Industries. So the whole idea in the comics, just quick history on the actual Blue Beetle Scarab, the Blue Beetle character, is that the original Blue Beetle is Dan Garrett. There's an Easter egg for him in the trailer when he goes inside Ted Cord's lair towards the end of the trailer. You see the classic Blue Beetle costume, so you know there was a Dan Garrett, and Ted Cord did exist because he finds all of his tech. The Dan Garrett character debuted in the Mystery Men comics number one during 1939, published by Fox Comics. He was a police officer who drank a special potion that gave him powers initially. In the 1950s, Fox Comics went out of business and sold its characters and IP to Charlton Comics, who retconned Blue Beetle's backstory and turned him into a professor, introduced the Blue Beetle Scarab concept. In the new version of his backstory, he found the Scarab at an ancient Egyptian archaeology site. The Scarab gave him powers, but not quite on the level of Jaime Reyes. 
In the 1960s, they introduced the Ted Kord character as Dan Garrett's student who takes up the mantle of Blue Beetle as Dan Garrett dies, but he's unable to pass the powers of the Scarab onto him, so Ted Kord uses his intellect and all of his technology to be a version of Blue Beetle, which is where you get all the Easter eggs towards the end of the trailer, like the Blue Beetle ship, his special lair. It's kind of like a backdoor Easter egg to Batman, like he was kind of a Batman version of Blue Beetle, which is why at the end of the trailer, George Lopez, playing Jaime Ray as his father, makes the joke about Batman like, Batman is a fascist. More recently, during the Infinite Crisis storyline in the 2000s, Ted Kord learns Maxwell Lord is secretly trying to take control of all metahumans on the planet, who then kills Ted Kord. Later, the Jaime Reyes character found the Scarab in an abandoned lot in his hometown of El Paso in the comics, but they're saying it's Palmera City during the movies. It bonds with him, giving him the true power of the Scarab, and he goes on to have adventures with most of the Teen Titans, Green Lanterns, he's a huge character during the Young Justice series, you've probably seen him during episodes, and he crosses over with the Justice League occasionally, like they mentioned Batman during the trailer. But he mostly works with the younger teams. It's hard to say what their plans are for him in James Gunn's new rebooted DCU, just because we haven't even gotten most of his movies yet. But the idea is that these characters will all be connected, they'll all cross over eventually. The funny thing too is that early on in Jaime Reyes' time as Blue Beetle, the Peacemaker character became a mentor to him, so maybe they'll do a version of that in the DCU because we know the Peacemaker will continue in Season 2. But during the trailer, you find that he gets a job at Cord Industries and his love interest, Jenny, seems like she steals the Scarab from Victoria Cord and gives it to him just trying to get it out of Cord Industries, thinking that Victoria is going to use it for something evil. Guard This With Your Life gives it to him in a Big Belly Burger container, so we're finally doing Big Belly Burger inside the DCU. I don't recall seeing Big Belly Burger in any of the Zack Snyder DCEU movies. They use Big Belly Burger in a lot of the Arrowverse shows, though. I think they also use it during the Smallville era, and there was a version of Jaime Reyes, Blue Beetle, during Smallville era. There was even a full pilot that they did, but they didn't pick it up to series. So if you saw any of the Blue Beetle footage from years and years ago, that's what it was from. Like, they almost made a Blue Beetle TV series, but I don't think they had quite the money they needed to do the special effects for the suit at the time. Now, the Jenny character isn't someone from the comics, so that might just be a moniker that they're using, and she might be secretly related to Ted Kord or Victoria Kord or something like that. The Scarab bonds with him like it does in the comics, and he starts learning about the systems in the suit. There is an AI voice, which is a little bit different from the comics. You don't usually hear an AI voice like an Iron Man type of voice inside the suit. They probably added that for the benefit of casual viewers who just aren't used to the Blue Beetle character in the comics. And I love the special effects here. They actually look pretty solid. And the way they portray his transformation into Blue Beetle when it's assimilating with him, they depict it as a very violent act, like it's taking over his body. And that's very important to the idea of what the Scarab is, what it does, and the reach. When the voice says, host acquired, and then takes him into the atmosphere, then later in the trailer, you hear the Jenny character saying, it's a world-destroying weapon. Sometimes it does what you want, sometimes it doesn't. That's meant to be a big twist on the idea of what the Reach do, what their technology is, how it works, how they take over other cultures. So the whole idea is that the Reach is this ancient alien race with advanced technology, and the Scarabs are meant to be precursors to their invasion. It's how they take over other cultures. They'll send a Scarab, which they'll pretend like it's going to help this new culture, like it'll bond with someone in this new culture, this new planet. Secretly, the Reach will have command over all the technology, so they'll turn that host into their finger puppet and use them to take over that culture. The difference with the Jaime Reyes character is that his scarab was somehow broken a little bit, so that sometimes it won't listen to what the Reach tells it to do, and sometimes it'll do whatever Jaime Reyes wants it to do. So I think they're just teasing that idea when Jenny says, sometimes it does what you want, sometimes it doesn't. It'll wind up turning on him and start hurting innocent people. They kind of did this during Iron Man 2 with Rhodey's War Machine armor. Rhodey tries to use his armor for good, but the systems take over and start doing their own thing. But here's the thing. Susan Sarandon's Victoria Cord is meant to be the main villain of this movie. I think they'll only tease the concept of the Reach at the end of this first movie. Like, oh, there's an alien invasion coming, by the way. We should get ready for that. And if the movie is successful enough, then they'll do the Reach in a sequel. The way they depict his powers in the trailer, the powers of the suit, are pretty accurate. It does pretty much whatever he wants it to do, forms whatever he wants it to form, kind of like the way Green Lantern rings work. We do know that James Gunn is doing a new Green Lantern series inside the DCU, but it's going to be kind of like True Detective with the Green Lantern characters, with Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart. Maybe if things go well for Blue Beetle, he'll have some minor crossover with those Green Lantern characters. If you're preparing for a space invasion, the Green Lantern characters are the ones that you would want to talk to. 
it seems like the Jenny character is the one that leads them into Ted Kord's former lab. This big array looks like it might have something to do with the Reach, the other scarabs, like the whole idea that there is invasion coming. Maybe he'll get a vision of that through the suit's systems. Like, oh, wait a minute, what is it that I'm seeing? This is a giant alien race that's coming to kill us. You hear Susan Sarandon's voice as Victoria Cord saying, the scarab chose you, but it belongs to me. That's right out of the comics. You see her drones, her men working for Cord Industries. I think the whole idea is that during the movie, Ted Cord isn't around. Something's happened to him. He's disappeared. Maybe they'll bring him back in some way. But just like in the comics, when Jaime Reyes first debuted, when he first became Blue Beetle, Ted Cord wasn't around to explain everything to him. That didn't happen till later. During the New 52 reboot and then eventually the DC Rebirth reboot, also there was a couple of DC reboots, they did bring the Ted Kord character back and he started helping Jaime Reyes, giving him advice, and they both were their versions of Blue Beetle. You see them take off in Ted Kord's classic Blue Beetle ship. Like I said, he has a lot of Iron Man style technology. He uses his wealth, his intellect to make tech to become a version of Blue Beetle because the scarab doesn't work for him. Very anime-inspired action scene here where the suit is telling him he can create whatever he can imagine. Whatever you can imagine, I can create. Let's party. Oh, yeah! Nice choice. Then inside Ted Kord's lair, we see a whole bunch of Easter eggs in the background. There's an Easter egg for Dan Garrett's classic Blue Beetle suit, Ted Kord's classic Blue Beetle suit. Then obviously the joke from George Lopez's father talking about Batman. Batman is a fascist. Just because they're inside Ted Kord's very Batman-like lair, like Ted Kord's version of a Batcave. I think part of the idea is that going forward in the DCU, in the Blue Beetle movies, he'll just continue using Ted Kord's lair until maybe Ted Kord shows up. It depends on what they say happened to him in the events of this movie. The way James Gunn talked about it, the movie itself was relatively self-contained, which is why he was sort of allowing it into the DCU. So I'm not expecting a ton of other big crossover characters like Wonder Woman isn't in this. I don't think Batman is actually in this. The funny thing is the movie is kind of like a reverse version of the Batgirl movie. So if you remember, famously, Warner Brothers basically just shelved the Batgirl movie and pretended like they were never going to air it, like no one will ever see this movie. It had been intended on an HBO Max exclusive release, like it wasn't going to get a theatrical release. They did the same thing for the Blue Beetle movie, like they were going to make it just for HBO Max. But then when they were making it, they decided that it looked so good, like it just felt like such a good movie. They upgraded the budget and turned it into a theatrical release, so it kind of went the other direction that the Batgirl movie went. Like, no, 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 we need more people to see this movie. So it does sound like it's going to be a pretty solid movie. The trailer actually seemed pretty good. If you spotted any other Easter eggs or references during the trailer footage that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. We'll get more trailers with more of the actual story in the next couple of months. It's not coming out till August, so it's going to be a little while. The funny thing about this is they actually featured Cord Industries on Arrow, The Flash, a bunch of the Arrowverse shows, a bunch of times in the Smallville universe. They wanted to do him in the movies for a long time. It's just taken them this long for special effects to catch up with it. There's going to be a brand new Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse trailer tomorrow. Make sure you enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. Of course, I'll do videos for everything. Everyone click here for that brand new Marvel Secret Invasion trailer video and click here for my new Guardians of the Galaxy 3 trailer video and Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.